So this is going to be a quick tutorial about my Google Blocks Substance Painter Unity workflow. Uh, this is the image I started with in Google Blocks, and I loosely based on that I created this uh, model. Little little street, some stairs going up. So I gave it some colors, but uh, they're just uh, I'll change all of that later on. So just uh, save this or uh, publish it, and then you can uh, export it and download it as FBX, and then I take it into uh, 3ds Max. So here I've imported the model in uh, 3ds Max. Now first thing I do um, is apply a gray material to everything because if I don't do that and I want to attach everything which is um, what I'm going to do now uh, it creates this uh, huge uh, material with some materials and it takes forever okay so now everything is attached everything looks good usually with Google Blocks you don't have to worry with normals being inverted or stuff like that but you could do your normal uh, checks the stuff you would do with every model um, in this case, I'm just going to uh, unwrap it, and because it is a uh, well, like a, a low poly style, and it has only hard edges, uh, automatic uh, unwrapping is just fine. So I'm gonna usually just make the spacing a little smaller; it doesn't seem to hurt. And there, it's unwrapped. Now, what I do just save a little space in this case is I'm going to select some of the uh, faces that are relatively large and of which I'm sure you're not going to be able to see them since since we're just making this one for this uh, particular view These back sides you're not going to see. Of course, when it's a uh, model for VR and you're going to be able to walk through it, you want to. You, you don't want to do that. But now it's fine. Okay, I guess something like that. Mm, I have to break them and I just flatten these one these out again now what I usually do is I make these very small and put them inside of the uh, UV space because some software gives uh, complaints about that Okay, well, that's our basic UV unwrap. Um, now I open uh, the model in Substance Painter. Okay, so uh, we've imported the model in Substance Painter. I've baked my mesh maps. And as a basis for this one, I'm going to use the uh, material I've been using quite a lot for my recent projects, which is something you can find on the site uh, Substance Share. You can find uh, Substance Materials. And this one is the SP1 cardboard. Uh, so just put that in your scene. I'll put that on as a basic. Uh, material then what I usually do is just add a material just color go to textures and then place the ambient occlusion in that you have to set the UV tiling to 1 or scale to 1 set it to uh, multiply I usually have it around 70 I think 70 80 it depends something like this now sometimes there are objects in a scene that I want to give um, 
just a little something extra when it comes to material so this drain uh, drainage pipe let's uh, you know let's let's make it steel And maybe the doorknob as well. Okay. Now I'm going to set it back a little bit because I don't want it to be too overpowering, but I like the uh, added reflection. Okay, maybe something like this. Add a layer and, uh, oh, I just start uh, kind of coloring. You have to set the layer also to uh, so you could um, paint your scene like that. So this is the quick uh, color scheme uh, I did for this one. White walls, uh, red roof tiles, and uh, kind of a pink and uh, pink stairs. Some yellow in the front. What I like with this one is because the, the, the walls are white, you know, you know you're going to have a lot of uh, like indirect light bouncing uh, going on. So I hope that's going to look pretty. Okay, now uh, just export your textures and uh, open all that stuff in Unity. Okay, so here we are in Unity. We've imported the uh, model, uh, the textures, which are just three in this case. And uh, what you also need is the uh, post-processing stack uh, version 2. You can find that on the GitHub. Okay, so let's drag in the model. And oh yeah, that's my material. So now first thing, um, make sure uh, you've generated light map UVs. Okay. And also make sure that your textures or, uh, are set to 4K they're automatically set to 2K on import. I had already done that. Okay. Now I'm just gonna place the camera. Something like this. Um. Okay, so what I do is go to the lighting tab, and there I uh, want to create a custom sky. I'll make another one. Skybox procedural. I mm, think this is going to be about. this color okay and we add it now this is just the background color because the source of the environment lighting I'm just gonna set to color um, I find it a little easier to tweak and it seems to be uh, faster but I'm not I haven't tested that just kind of works for this more stylized uh, type of thing um, okay well for the lighting first let's put the Sun at an interesting angle with this scene Oh, 
Or maybe something like this. Uh, now what I, what I like to do is uh, set, set it to mixed because I want the uh, sun to uh, be interjected into the uh, uh, the baked uh, global illumination which I'm going to set to baked indirect. I'm going to use the progressive because you just have a you can see a quick preview of what you're doing. Um, Let's set it to very low just for the test and I turn off the real-time global illumination because I think it for this scene I only really need like the baked uh, GI. Okay, now make sure that your model is set to static or nothing's going to happen. Now you can play around with this going to set it to four bounces. Just want to see what happens with all these uh, colors blending. And for your final bake, uh, usually what I do is set it to medium and then I set it to uh, enlighten because there you also have the possibility to, uh, let me show you, turn on final gather, uh, which I don't I mean, I think it looks nicer. So I'll just let it uh, uh, let it bake a little while, and then uh, I'll be back to do some uh, post processing. And that's basically it. Okay, so I've baked it uh, by setting uh, to enlighten uh, baking indirect. I put this one on a uh, low resolution and I turn on the final gather. I also added a reflection probe, which is probably not that necessary because they're not really reflective, uh, that much reflective surfaces. Anyway, this one looks a little dark, but um, well I'm going to leave it uh, the way it is. I added some blocking volumes that I also, some just some cubes uh, with some dark material that I also set to static um, so there wouldn't be too much light there and I added some white cubes for some extra bouncing for the interiors and I added a light, a point light which I also set to mixed um, so basically what we have to do now is um, at the uh, post processing, so add a post processing pro post processing volume. Uh, set it to global. I'm gonna make a new one and a new camera. Put a post processing layer. Uh, I'm gonna put it on everything. This will be fine for uh, the purposes of this tutorial. I'm going to put it to, I'm not sure. Okay, it won't matter that much. Um, anyway, the effects, especially the ambient occlusion, is really improved um, with version 2. It has something called multi scale volumetric obscurance, and it just. Um, well, it has, I guess, different values for uh, for different um, surfaces or something. Don't ask me. Okay, well, just some basic effects, some bloom. Um, maybe uh, a lens blur texture. They come with the uh, post-processing stack. Just give you that uh, nice little dirt in the bloom. Maybe put, turn that diffusion up a bit. Play with the threshold and bring it down. I don't know. It's just add to taste. I would say. 
some vignetting. What else? Uh, yeah, color grading. Just basic tone mapping. Neutral. And sometimes I mess around with color filtering, which, yeah, why not? Maybe a little. A little bit of this. Maybe that's a little too much. Okay, I'm just not going to spend too much time on it. So, uh, this is the end result. Baked in Unity materials with Substance Painter and modeled in Google Blocks. And this took me about, well, actually exactly 2 hours and 45 minutes. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this and... Um, it is useful to somebody.